Are we cooking by gas? Yes, I think we are. 37 mile range. Hmm. That's probably not going to be enough to get to shirt laws. I suppose we better get some fuel. I just thought I'd mind it. Well, greetings everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's been a minute. So, an update post, well, a street triple update, as you can see. So we are now on 2,100 miles. We're going in for its second service. The bike's been faultless to date. Um, anyone that's been watching the channel will know obviously that it's now been tuned at Talk Tune Dino down in Newark. Russ and Simon. Uh, bike's been fine. Had no issues with the rapid bike either module whatsoever since I've had it installed. Well, since I installed it, I should say, and since it's been tuned. I've had no issues with the bike at all. Um, it's been running really, really well. Going in for its second service. And more importantly, unfortunately, um, you'll be aware that obviously there's a recall put out on these for uh, the valve retainers. Get ready for a surprise! Which I didn't think this bike was actually affected by. When I went on the Triumph website and put in the VIN number, it wasn't affected. It said it wasn't one of the ones that, was, that it needed. Uh, but it turns out that it actually is a Cordon dealership, so that will be happening as well. This bike, man, it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. Yes, yeah, so let's go in for its valve retainer spring recall or whatever the hell it is that's getting done. Um, quite disappointed. I don't really want them to pull it apart, I'll be honest. It's been running great, um, but I guess for the longevity of the bike, it is a necessary evil. Since doing the riding for sausage, I've not really ridden this bike much, I'll be honest. It, uh, I've done pretty much a year's riding on the Scrambler in, in a week, so uh, yeah, other bikes have been neglected. I've managed to get out of the VFR a couple of times at least, which has been great. But the weather, to be honest, the channel's been a bit quiet on videos. I've still got a couple of uh, Riding for Sausage videos to update. I'm not too sure if this will come out before or after them. Um, I suspect probably after. Um, it'll probably be winter by the time I get around to editing this video, but uh, fingers crossed, hopefully not. I need to, uh, I need to get better at um, editing and getting stuff up sooner rather than later. Um, it's affecting, it is affecting channel subs and views and all that sort of stuff, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Life goes on at, with YouTube. Um, yeah, I had some bad news recently from a uh, friend of mine from school. We unfortunately lost his life recently, um, quite unexpected from a very short illness and yeah it's uh, it's affected all of our all of our fan group and it just makes you realise not to put a damper on things but it makes you realise life is precious and uh, things can change at the flip of a coin so yeah tell your loved ones tell your loved ones you love them appreciate life and enjoy the sunshine Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, very sad, very, very sad. He was, uh, wasn't a close friend, but we used to hang around together at school and um, he was part of our part of our friend group and I've not seen much of him in the re most recent years, but it's still, when it's one of your own, it still hits, it still hits hard, so. Anyway, that's, uh, that's enough of that. So, on to the mighty street. This bike has just been superb, basically. There's been no issues with it whatsoever.
So yeah, I was quite surprised to find out about the recall, but hey, it is what it is. We'll get it done and hopefully that'll be more trouble free riding. Had a bit of a squeaky brake lever this morning, so I've just put some a little bit of lube on the uh, on the piston and the and the pin on the pivot pin. So hopefully, I guess that's what you call it. This this pin in here. Um, yeah, it seems to certainly have done the trick anyway. That and just a little bit of lube on the inside of the a uh, little bit of grease on the inside of the rubber rubber grommet there, the rubber seal. I guess the bike's just been sitting, not really been getting used. It's just dried out a little bit, but. But yeah, I mean, I honestly can't fault this bike. It's been absolutely fantastic. It it does everything you need to do. It's plenty, plenty quick. think it was still recording then. Sometimes it's quite hard to tell with this camera, depending on where the, the sun is. Third gear, acrophobic pipe, spark headers, baffle installed. <laughs> oh dear. It just, yeah. It just ticks all the boxes, this bike. My lanky, my lanky limbs, my height. I mean, I find this bike all day comfy. This little screen, a lot of people ask about the little screen. I think it helps finish off the, the look of the front of the bike. Um, the little visor, this little visor helps, and the, the screen helps to uh, get rid of the, the hole in the back of the, back of the dashboard there. And I do think that it makes a little bit of difference to wind protection, I'll be honest. Not a massive amount, but it does make some. Yeah, better go and get some fuel, I suppose. And we're back in the game. 18 pounds of your very finest Super unleaded. Only the best for my girl. Yeah, it's warming up quite nicely. 18 degrees already. And it's Half past nine. <laughs> oh. That's happened there. That's not happened before. Strange. Yep, spark headers. Spark headers. Acrophobic link pipe. Baffle installed. And I'll be honest, this bike rips. Put the baffle in, because I'll be honest, it's a little bit antisocial with it out, but it does sound like a Moto 2 bike. I love this thing, I really do. Since we tracked out Dogs Park, I've actually left it on uh, in my in track settings, so the suspension is pretty firm. Um, for those asking, the track settings are just purely what's in the handbook, plus a couple of clicks of preload um, on the rear and uh, on the front, just for my just for my lardy weight. It's 
so yeah bike feels pretty firm but it's still quite soft really as far as track settings are concerned but um but that is the track settings out of the manual so 2000 miles what would i change about this bike well i'll be honest it's pretty hard to find fault with touch for power be good but it's not needed really just ride it harder the rear shock on track I did find for my weight is a bit soft so I could really do with a could do with a stronger spring really after uh, a couple of sessions in the in, in the fast group it does uh, start to get a bit get a bit spongy after a while running at a uh, slightly slightly faster pace but for most most of the time honestly it's not really an issue more so for tyre wear than anything else as you'll have seen on the Donington track day video I did um, I put these Conti race attack 2 roads on and I've got to say so far on the wet and the dry on the road they've been great on track they were superb probably steer slightly slower probably steer slightly slower than the super courses but I mean you're talking yeah I mean that's only on track where you're really going to notice it to be honest but I'm assured by tyres for bikes that they should last. These should last longer than the Pirellis, so that's a that's a win in my book. And they still grip like the proverbial on a blanket. So, mileage-wise, we're wearing okay so far. I've done about just short of a thousand miles of them now, I think. Um, yeah, they're still wearing okay. So, so far, so good. Tire warmers not needed. laps and you're good to go and in the rain they've been fine certainly in the rain they've been more sure-footed than super courses which are not exactly known for the rain the rain prowess and ability but they can do it but I would say these are better not quite as vague I did do a separate video on the Pirelli's in the wet and it was really wet that day albeit temperature wise it was relatively mild I think it was about 9 degrees or so I think but they're certainly not winter commuting tyres put it that way fuel economy wise since I've had the bike tuned it's doing about 120 miles to a tank. Obviously this is a slightly smaller year for fuel, for fuel capacity. But I'm gonna stop talking here and just let you listen to this coming up this hill because it's absolutely superb. Absolutely rips. That wasn't quite full throttle. That wasn't quite throttle to the stop up there, but it uh, goes rather nicely. Fast enough to have fun. Not too fast that you're going to lose your license completely, but it'll certainly do that. What I love about this bike, it's just the ease of everything about it if you want to ride fast it'll ride fast if you want to ride slow it's happy to be ridden slow if you want to tour on it it'll easily tour it's plenty big enough for me it's comfy enough 
luggage options are slightly restricted. I'll just put on this Jivy, Jivy tank ring. I think it's a GF02 for anyone that's uh, anyone that's looking. Fueling reliability wise, I've not had any issues with the rapid bike module at all. Just jumped on the bike, started the bike up, jumped on it and gone. It's been absolutely fine. I'm a little bit nervous about putting it at the dealership to get it chipped to get it to, to get it serviced. I have mentioned that it has been tuned, so I don't want them to flash the ECU if they if there are any updates because it'll obviously affect the tuning of the bike. But I'm sure it'll be fine. But it's just so light, it's so flickable. And it's just so much fun. I mean, it's worth buying just for the noise. Somebody recently asked to the channel about the fueling lowdown. That's 4,000 revs and third gear, and it's fine. Yeah, the fuel and low down is actually not, not bad at all, really. Um, you'd have to really have it on a dyno and an air fuel, air fuel monitor um, to tell the difference, I'll be honest. Very, very, only very rarely if you're in a, in a slightly higher gear, maybe like fourth gear through town, um, you're, you're keeping the revs quite low at a low speed. Sometimes you find that, that slight glitchiness in the fuel but I mean it's you know it's so rare to even notice it that it's not been an issue at all for me uh, but that's what Russ was saying just slow down the rev range that's where that's where he's really noticed where he wasn't really have that overly happy with it but I mean you can't ride the bike I'll be honest you can't tell it never spends it never spends its life down at 3,000 revs anyway in fourth gear so um, that's got to be less, it's, it's less than that, you're like 2,000 revs just about to tick over. Tick over to like two and a half, three thousand, 3,000 and yeah, it's next to nothing. Not a problem at all. Keep thinking of getting cruise control fitted. Obviously it should go in there, and just change the module and tell the bike it's got it fitted, but honestly I'm not too sure if I warrant paying out 350 quid for the motion itself plus plus obviously getting the dealership to tune it to tell it this this was it's fit I don't do enough long long distance mileage with it really it's kind of one that's nice to have but handy through town keep it to the 40s 30s and 40s not too short the minimum speed is for it to work, but I suspect it would be 30 mile an hour. People ask about fueling. Well, we're doing 60 on the dual carriage right here. And the pickup, top gear. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I just love it, I love the way it just pulls, it just picks up for nothing and just goes. 60, full throttle. Full throttle. Yeah, very slight hesitancy there, very, very slightly, but it's next to nothing. Where you really notice the tune on this bike though is like the mid the mid to top end. I mean that's how it's been it's been tuned for mid-range and top end and it certainly it certainly goes that way. Yes this bike's been great. Really can't fault it. Honestly, I don't know what I'd change it for. Um, I've said to uh, a couple of mates that follow the channel if um, Try to bring out a speed triple with electronic suspension. I could be tempted. I don't really know why. I think I just like the idea of 
adjust the suspension at a touch of a button. I did like it on my S1000 when I had it. Never got to try it out on track, unfortunately, because it didn't keep the bike long enough. <laughs> You'll notice there's a bit of a theme here with me and bikes, but... So far, honestly, I don't really know what I changed this bike for. I love the fact it's got more punch than the 600. I love the fact that it's more flexible than the 600. It's got the mid-range. I love the fact it's evolving. It's evolving to ride. It wants to, it wants to be ridden, but it can also be a pussy cat if you want to. But yeah, so far, there aren't enough good words I can say about this bike. Apart from the fact that it's going for, in for recall. That's a bit, it is disappointing, I'll be honest. I am quite disappointed about that. I was actually sitting a little bit smug thinking that it wasn't needed. Smug in the thought knowing that they're not going to have to rip over my engine and inspect it and change out its valve retainers, but anyway. It's obviously needed for a reason. But it's good to try for a bit of it and they're sorting it out. Obviously anyone that's bought a KTM 790-890 recently is well aware of the issues around the, uh, the cam. The cam on that and wearing and oil usage and all that kind of good stuff. But. If that doesn't give you audible pleasure, then I don't know what would. It just sounds fab. And that's with the baffle in, don't forget. So yeah, if I change the bike, honestly I don't know what I'd change it to. I quite like the thought of keeping on this a bit longer and maybe doing a few bits and pieces to it. If we can get it over 140 brake at the rear wheel, that'd be great. Just because. Not that it actually needs it, but just because. Tony Scott Motorsport, so they can do, you can get 140 brake out of them, no problem. Obviously the Moto 2 bikes run higher than that. Uh, but until such times as you can map the ECU, I'm not too sure if you can get, you can do that. There's certainly more power to be had out the engine without a doubt. But it's currently limited by the, uh, currently limited by the ECU for the time being, because you're not getting 100% throttle all throughout the whole rev range, unfortunately. But, it's not exactly slow by any means. So. I'd quite like to, I've always quite fancied a set of lightweight wheels. Does it, it bike doesn't need it. But it'd be quite cool to have. Another couple of kilos saving in weight. If I could lose a bit of weight as well, that'd be even better. But interestingly, with the new, your new CBR 600 is heavier than this bike down on power ZX6 heavier than this bike and down on power top speed wise I suspect they're probably a bit uh, they're a bit quicker due to the aerodynamics but this is 188 kilos I think the new CPR 600 is just over 190 the next six and so both make substantially less power the CPR 6 that 108 brake I know 119 horsepower isn't it 118 good for 600 but this is 128 brake at the rear wheel what I would like to know is are oh, you gonna go my way no mm. What difference a track pack makes on the CBR 600? Nobody seems to be able to tell you. But I think it would make it probably in line with this. You would think so. I'm sure it's got a different head gasket. Maybe a different cam or something, I can't remember. I want to find out. But this is just a great deal to bike. I 
I love it. I really do. Good brakes, good suspension, good power, comfy, reliable. Off its warranty thing, but fun to ride, involving to ride. It is some piece of kit. I love it. It's awesome. Still using the standard pads actually on that. Um, might change them to something a bit more track oriented. Just a bit more initial bite. But so far the standard pads on track have actually been pretty good. But SBS, RST pads. are known to give better better bite but just need a bit more heat to get them to go and here we are that's it then we're here should never be the same again after open heart surgery